Why was Jesus sent to earth? God lived up in heaven. Jesus was there too. He was the Son of God. They looked down at the people on earth and saw that things weren't going well for them. They saw that there was war and that many were sick. They saw that people were only thinking about themselves. So they decided that Jesus would go down to earth to help them. Jesus was born to Mary and grew up together with her and her husband Joseph. And you've probably heard something about that story before. He did many things to show people how much God loved them. He healed the sick and the weak, making them healthy again. And he spoke God's word to people everywhere he went. Then there were some who understood that Jesus really was God's son and they began to believe in God and believe that his power could do miracles for people. Before Jesus came to earth, you couldn't get forgiveness for the things that you did that were wrong. The only way was to sacrifice something. That meant that you would give up something that was yours, for example, an animal or some good food, which you in a way would give to God so that he would forgive the bad thing that you had done. But after Jesus came to earth, everyone could receive forgiveness. To receive forgiveness means that the bad thing that you did, which you regret, will be forgotten by God. But Jesus came first and foremost to make it possible for us to choose the good instead of the evil. He wanted us to have the possibility to live forever together with God and Jesus. He showed us how we could get help from God when things were difficult, by praying to Him. So why was Jesus actually sent down to earth? Well, it was because God loved all the people that He had created so very much, and He wanted them to be happy. He told about God and His Word, how it can set us free from being selfish and doing bad things. And He healed the sick and helped the weak. Jesus coming to earth wasn't just something to help people who lived long ago, but it can help us now too. We can pray to God for help and forgiveness. We can choose to do the good. And we can have an eternal life together with Jesus. Jesus grows up in Nazareth. Jesus was born here on earth as a human, but there was something very special about him. He didn't have a normal father because God was his father. This was why Jesus was born with a spirit from God, a power and a voice inside him in a way that told Jesus what was right and wrong. No one else has been born with that, but Jesus was. The Spirit of God showed him what he should choose when he was tempted to do something wrong. He lived together with Mary and Joseph in a city called Nazareth. Joseph and Mary had other children too, so Jesus had brothers and sisters. They probably weren't very rich, so it's almost certain that the children had to help with the work already when they were little. Jesus knew his whole life who he was, that he was God's own son, and that his task was to help the people in the world. But there weren't very many people other than he and his family who knew that. So Jesus certainly experienced many of the same things other children do, like how siblings can be annoying or what it's like to be left out of a game. There was no one who treated Jesus in a special way, so he knows very well what it's like to be a child. But no matter what happened or what he was tempted to, he always chose the good. He never did anything evil, what we call sin, but he was good to those around him. One day, when Jesus had become a young man, 
The Spirit of God told him that he was to say more about who he was and why he came to earth. So he walked to the synagogue, which is like a church or a hall where the Jews met. They gathered there to read the Bible and pray. It is serious and quiet in a synagogue, and there are clear rules of what you can and cannot do. On this day, there were a lot of people in the synagogue. Jesus stood up. It was completely quiet in the hall. He read a Bible verse that said that God's Spirit was in him and that it was he who was chosen to help the people. After that, he closed the scroll and said, Today this Bible verse has been fulfilled while you were listening. Everyone was completely quiet. They stared at Jesus. They were probably a little confused about what he had actually said. They thought he had said something good, and the way that he had said it impressed them at first. But when they realized that Jesus really meant what he had said, they became very angry. They became so angry that they grabbed a hold of Jesus, took him out of the synagogue, across the road, and straight towards a cliff. The people that Jesus had grown up with, who had known him since he was little, were now completely ready to throw Jesus off the cliff. But Jesus had the Spirit of God in him. And suddenly a wonder happened, something that was like a miracle. Even though they were a lot of people, something stopped them. Jesus walked straight through the crowd and away from them. It was strange that they so suddenly stopped pushing Jesus. It must have been God who was watching over him so that they weren't able to hurt him, and he helped Jesus to be brave. Then a new time began for Jesus. The years in Nazareth were over, and he would now travel around Israel to speak to the people. Jesus heals the sick. Jesus went out and preached the word of God to people. The news about Jesus' preaching spread very quickly because Jesus spoke the word of God in a new way. A way that people hadn't heard before, and at the same time, the way he lived matched what he said. When he told about God's word, he spoke from the spirit of God that he had in him. Word of what Jesus was doing also spread because he performed many miracles for people. A miracle is something that people think is impossible or something a human being can't make happen. But Jesus had God's power with him, so he could do these miracles. Once Jesus did something that really seemed impossible, it's actually impossible to explain how it happened because it was done by the power that comes from God. Jesus had come to a small village a lot of people were waiting there. They wanted to meet him and listen to what he had to say. A man named Jairus was waiting there too. He had heard that Jesus healed the sick, and now his daughter had become so sick that she was dying. He asked Jesus if he could come to his home and help his daughter. It was a long walk, so they had to hurry. After they had walked for a little while, someone suddenly came running to Jairus from the house. He said that Jesus didn't need to come. Jairus' daughter was already dead. It was too late. Jesus heard what was said, but he told Jairus not to be afraid, but to believe in him, and he went along to see the daughter anyway. When they arrived at the house, Jesus saw that it was full of people crying and wailing loudly. He went inside to them and said, The girl is not dead. She is just sleeping. Then they began to mock Jesus. They knew that she was dead. But Jesus, he told everyone to leave immediately. Then he walked over to the bed, there where the girl lay. Jesus turned to the girl and asked her to wake up. And right after he said it, she opened her eyes. 
She was alive again. Her parents were overjoyed. They realized that what had just happened was a miracle. Jesus is no longer on earth. He is in heaven now. But can he still help and heal people? Yes, he can and he does. In the Bible it says that if you believe and pray, God will help the sick. Sometimes you can pray to Jesus for someone to be healed, and then they will. But it doesn't always happen exactly the way we ask. That doesn't mean that God didn't hear our prayer. He hears and helps us every time, but he helps in the way that he sees is for the very best, because he loves us so much. Hi friends, and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend. Download the Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. The kingdom of heaven belongs to children. Jesus says in the Bible that the kingdom of heaven belongs to the children. And if you belong to a place, that means that you fit in and have every right to be there. When you belong to a place, you often call it home. So you can actually say that the kingdom of heaven is a home for all children. And this doesn't just apply to the children who have heard about Jesus. It applies to every child in the whole world. No matter who you are, how you look, or which family you come from. The kingdom of heaven isn't exactly like a kingdom or a country here on earth. It is up in heaven where God and Jesus live. There are no wars there, no one is mean to each other, and no one is sad or upset. Everyone is happy. God's kingdom is a paradise. Think about it, a place where we can always be happy. It's even written that the gates are made out of gold. We can't totally understand what it looks like there, but we can be very sure that it's much better than we can imagine. In one of the stories in the Bible, it's written about one time when Jesus was out walking together with his disciples. As they met people along their way, Jesus told them about the kingdom of heaven. Then there came a mom who had two small children with her. She wanted Jesus to lay his hands on her children because she believed that it would help and bless them. The disciples were the first to meet the little family and they turned them away. That means that they said they should leave. They thought that maybe Jesus didn't have time for them or that he had other more important things to do. Jesus quickly found out what had happened, that the disciples had sent them away. Then he said that they should let the little children come to him. They were very valuable to him and to God. The kingdom of heaven belongs to the children, he told them. You might be wondering why? Why is it that the kingdom of heaven belongs to the children? Well, it's simple. It is because all children are born with a completely pure heart. That means that there is nothing evil there. And maybe you remember that we talked about how there is nothing evil in God's kingdom either? So that means children with completely pure hearts fit in very well there. And when we take good care of that pure heart, we can have a little piece of the kingdom of heaven inside us while living here on earth. Then Jesus can be with us every day and make everything that happens be the best for us.
Jesus and Peter the Disciple It's written in the Bible about a man named Peter. He was actually a common fisherman, but something special happened to him because he met Jesus. Jesus, he was the children's best friend. They loved to be near him. He was brave and he dared to say what was right, even if very important people disagreed with him. Peter was not like that. He could get scared, scared of what other people thought about him. He wanted to be the way Jesus was, but he didn't quite believe that it was really possible. But when Peter saw what Jesus did, he began to believe. Maybe you've heard about the time Peter and some others went out fishing. They had been fishing the whole night but hadn't caught a single fish. They were pretty tired and worn out. When they got back to land, Jesus was there. He told them to go back out to deep water and cast out their nets again. The disciples weren't convinced that it would help. They had already been fishing in the whole area, but they chose to do it because Jesus had said to. And guess what happened? The nets filled up with fish, as full as they could be. Jesus probably wanted to show Peter and the others that they could always believe in him. After this, they chose to follow along with Jesus as his disciples. The disciples were very happy to be together with Jesus. Peter thought that nothing bad should ever happen to Jesus. He was so fond of him and always wanted to be where Jesus was. He was his best friend. One evening, Jesus said something strange to Peter. Jesus said that pretty soon, Peter was going to pretend that he didn't know Jesus. Not just one time, but three times. And after that, a rooster would crow. Peter didn't understand that at all. Why would he pretend that he didn't know his best friend? No, I'm not going to do that, is probably what Peter thought. Then something sad happened. They took Jesus away. Think that someone could hate Jesus. They wanted him to die. Peter got very scared. He followed after these people, but kept a little distance. He was scared that he would be taken prisoner too, if they understood that he knew Jesus. All of a sudden, someone recognized Peter and asked him, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? Peter answered a little nervously, no, I don't know him. Some more people walked toward him and one said, I have seen you together with Jesus. But Peter answered again, I promise you, I don't know that person. Then Peter was asked the same thing a third time and he answered for the third time, you're wrong, I don't know him. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had told him. He was ashamed. How could he let Jesus down? He hadn't managed to be brave for his best friend. Peter thought for sure that Jesus was going to be very sad when he saw him, that Jesus would be disappointed and maybe angry. But Jesus looked at Peter with hope. He didn't get upset or disappointed. He already knew beforehand that Peter was going to pretend that he didn't know him three times. That's because he knows that even though we try as hard as we can to do the good, we don't always manage it all the way. Jesus also knew that Peter would become a much braver man very soon because Jesus had a plan to help people. First, Jesus had to die on the cross. Three days later, he rose up from the grave. And after a little while, he went up to heaven. And then something very important happened. Jesus sent something back down to the earth, something that can help us. What he sent was his own spirit, the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew that Peter was going to become a completely new man when he received the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit is a great power, a power which shows us what is right and wrong and helps us to be able to choose the good. When Peter got this spirit inside him, he became a very brave man. And Jesus wants to help us too. He loves us exactly as we are, even though we haven't always managed to do the good. He knows it can be hard, but if we want to do the good, then he will help us. Hi friends, and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend. Download the Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. Jesus and the Unpopular Zacchaeus <laughs> Having friends is a very nice thing. You can play together and have someone to be with. But have you ever seen someone who doesn't have friends? Maybe someone walking by themselves? Or have you seen someone get made fun of because they're a little different? Jesus paid extra attention to exactly these people. He chose to be with those that other people left out or looked down on. He was especially good towards the poor and the sick. He was even good to those who had done something wrong. Why would he do that? It could seem a little strange. You see, Jesus, he wanted to help people who weren't doing so well. He thought more about the others than about himself. What people thought about him wasn't important to him, and he didn't try to be popular either. In the Bible, for example, it's written about a rich man named Zacchaeus. He was the boss for the tax collectors in the city of Jericho. A tax collector was someone who was in charge of taking fees when people brought things they had bought into a city. They were known for lying and being sneaky because they often tricked people into paying more than they should. So tax collectors were quite unpopular and people did not like them. People didn't like Zacchaeus. He didn't have any friends. One time, Jesus came on a visit to the city where Zacchaeus lived. Zacchaeus had heard that Jesus helped the sick and that he forgave those who had done bad things. He really wanted to meet Jesus. But Zacchaeus was a very short man, so it was difficult for him to see Jesus in the big crowd of people. Then he got an idea. He ran to a tree close to the road where Jesus was walking and climbed up so he could see better. When Jesus got closer, he saw Zacchaeus sitting up there in the tree. He walked over to the tree and asked him to come down, and then he asked if he could visit him. Zacchaeus was very surprised, and all the people around probably were too. Some of them even became angry. Was Jesus really going to visit someone who had been dishonest and sneaky and who no one else liked? But it didn't matter at all to Jesus what the other people thought. He loved all people and wanted to do what was the best for them. Jesus didn't choose his friends based on who was popular. He saw that Zacchaeus really wanted to meet him, and Jesus was very glad to be his friend. Zacchaeus was so thankful that Jesus cared about him that he decided to make right all the wrong and foolish things he had done. He wanted to be kind and do the good. And when he did this, Zacchaeus got a whole new life. He became a happy man. You and I can learn from this story. We can choose to be good towards all people like Jesus and especially towards those who maybe aren't doing so well or don't have many friends. And if other people look down on those that I'm together with, I can choose not to care what they think of me. When I choose to be good towards all people and never talk bad about or look down on those around me, it can change their lives. And that makes my life happy too.
What is it like to have a friend in Jesus? If there's something that we can't see with our eyes, does that mean it doesn't exist? Have you ever experienced a time when it was really windy? The wind itself is invisible, but we can still tell that it's there. It can make trees bend and leaves fall off. It creates waves on the sea and makes things blow over. It isn't so hard to believe that it's there. We believe it's real even though it's invisible because it does something to us or to things around us. It's a little like that when we think of having Jesus as a friend. We can't see him with our eyes, but we can experience that he's there. A lot of people can tell about how Jesus has helped and been with them through their lives. And when I believe in Jesus, I can experience that too. It's written in the Bible about something that happened to Peter after Jesus went back to heaven. Peter was a disciple of Jesus. A king named Herod captured Peter and imprisoned him. The only thing Peter had done was to tell others about Jesus. The king didn't like that, so he decided that Peter should be put in prison for a severe punishment. Outside of the prison, a lot of soldiers stood guard day and night to make sure Peter couldn't escape. Peter was in a dangerous situation, but he knew that he could pray to Jesus. Jesus was his best friend and had promised to help him. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, Peter was woken up by someone who was poking him gently in the side while a friendly voice whispered, hurry, get up. Peter didn't understand what was going on. He had big chains around both of his feet. But he did what the friendly voice said and stood up. And suddenly the chains fell off. The voice told him to put on his cloak and come with him. And Peter followed him out of the prison, wondering all the while if it was a dream or if it was really happening. It was completely quiet. The only sound was the snoring of the soldiers who were supposed to be on guard. They were in a deep sleep and the stranger with the friendly voice could lead Peter out of the prison, through the gates of the city, and out to freedom. When Peter turned to thank the nice stranger, uh -huh. he was gone. Jesus had sent one of his angels to help him. Jesus had promised that he would be with his disciples always, and he would hear them when they prayed to him. A very happy Peter could go home to his friends and you can believe they were happy to see him. Jesus' disciples experienced that he was their best friend through their whole lives, even after he went to heaven. You and I can experience that too. Jesus is a best friend that we can talk to about everything. We don't have to pray to him in a special way or at a special place. He is with us wherever we are, with our friends, at school, at home, everywhere. When we believe in Jesus, we get to experience that he is our friend, for real. Dear, my comforter, my helper, is Jesus for me here. When I'm afraid or troubled, He is right there. He makes me feel glad and safe again. When I pray, He hears me, He is my friend. I am so glad. Plain. He helps me make good choices so I won't go astray. Tells me I must be honest, 
faithful and true. We brought us in joy where hearts are sad. Give them comfort as he teaches me to. I am so glad I have a Loved me long, long ago. He knows the things that test me. He knows the way I go. Gladly I place my future in his safe hands. And all of my gifts, abilities, I will use them all for him. Hi, friends, and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend. Download the Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. I am so glad I have a friend. 